Welcome to St Mary's Rogation Walk for July 2021. Hopefully, if the weather is fine, this is a small step towards normality. Now, some of you will be walking with me around the grounds of Nampanton Hall. Some may prefer to stay at the hall and share in the service there. And some of you may be watching this at home and sharing with us there. The format follows a similar pattern to previous rogation walks. We shall take a circular route around the hall grounds, stopping three times to consider and pray for the town and community, the countryside and creation, and finally the world. At each stop we shall have a reading, a brief reflection, prayers, and conclude with a hymn. As usual, we give grateful thanks to Nampanton Hall for allowing us to use their grounds and facilities. Wherever you are, I hope you share and enjoy our Rogation service. We open with a prayer from Morning Prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for our natural world by Bishop Timothy Dudley Smith. Heavenly Father, we have found out so much knowledge and yet possess so little wisdom. We pray that in your mercy you will save us from ourselves. Help us to learn the right use of nature no less quickly than we unlock her new treasures and give us hearts and minds made new in Christ to dedicate your gifts of knowledge to the service of others and to the praise of your name. Amen. From the hall we walk down the drive and across the meadow above the church where we stop to consider and pray for the town and our community. A reading from Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16 The Labourers in the Vineyard For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay beginning with the last, and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. 
The story of the labourers in the vineyard may at first seem unfair to us, in a society where reward is proportional to work done. But Jesus is promoting a fairer society, where all receive an equal share. Our basic needs are the same, so should not our reward be the same? The allegory is that the vineyard is the kingdom of heaven, the owner is God, and the workers represent all of God's people. Our purpose as Christians is to create a little of heaven here on earth through a more just and fair society. Lord God, we pray for our town and its communities, for the people who've lived here all their lives, for those just passing through and for those whose story in this place has just begun. We pray for homes everywhere across the town. Some we know are filled with light and love and laughter, while others are filled with hardship, sadness and tears. Help us to share your love to build strong communities where all are welcomed, all are valued and all are loved. We pray for those who serve the town and its people. Grant our MP and local councillors wisdom and courage in the decisions they need to make on the community's behalf. Grant strength and confidence to medical staff and emergency services who seek to help, heal and keep the peace. We give thanks for workers who keep our essential services running and for everyone who offers their time and skills to local charities in support of those who can't support themselves. We also pray for all who serve our town and communities in hidden ways, quietly making things better in whichever way they can. We pray for everyone who finds employment in our town and give thanks for the variety of businesses and industries offering jobs to those who need them. We bring before God all who are experiencing employment difficulties at this time, particularly as a result of the effects of COVID and who may fear what the future holds. Help us to do what we can to support local businesses. We give thanks for all those places in town which offer an opportunity to learn something new, praying for all who teach and all who learn, regardless of the age of the student. We pray for everyone who chooses to study here and give thanks for all that the university adds to life in Loughborough. Lord, as we reflect on everything that makes Loughborough what it is, we look forward to its future and give thanks that we're here to experience this time, this place and be a part of it. Amen. <laughs>